all right so now we have successfully completed the e-commerce project so now it's time to uh, build our app for production all right so uh, for that uh, i am using a, a third party service uh, to deploy your uh, application called render okay so this is a open source uh, free service where you can deploy uh, any of your uh, react applications or uh, any applications for that matter okay so all you just need to do is uh, sign in and uh, create a create an account or uh, if you don't have an account you just need to sign up okay so i just have an account so i'll just uh, sign in and uh, get back so once you sign in you get an uh, interface like this okay so um, i have actually tried to deploy uh, uh, deploy many of my previous application so uh, if you are new here then you wouldn't see anything like this okay so there are other uh, third party services like netlify or heroku okay so uh, i'm just choosing render for for some reason because it has uh, many features like uh, you can deploy a static site as well as a web service okay and uh, i had some issues in uh, deploying the uh, uh, the back end through netlify and uh, like the front end through uh, vercel or uh, uh, Heroku or something like that, right? So uh, usually we do that. Okay, so we deploy our backend in some other service and also um, the front end in some other place. However, um, I, I just uh, I just had a problem in doing that. So uh, I just found out a most elegant and easier way where you just convert all of your files into uh, static assets and then uh, like you know um, like build them once you uh, once you uh, like you know deploy that uh, for production just you can just do it in just one click without you know ha having much hassle in deploying the backend and the front end so um early on when i started this course i actually did a mistake where um, you know i uh, i thought that i'll be deploying my front end in another service and back end another another uh, in another service so uh, that is why i created two different uh, but uh, what we can just do is what the package.json we have within our uh, server file we can just uh, create that in our um, root directory all of our packages and then feed them uh, to our server okay so by this uh, we can um, like you know we have all of this in uh, one file okay so all of our dependencies in this one uh, main folder called spark tech so uh, let's uh, go ahead and make those changes let's go to our server directory and inside the package.json let's um, you know copy all of our uh, dependencies okay it's actually here let's copy all of these uh, dependencies and uh, let's paste them in the root package.json where we have it in our root here right where we just have this um, you know uh, concurrently installed so we can uh, paste them right below this okay with a comma and uh, here once our dependencies are uh, pasted we can go ahead and install them all so i am opening my terminal and uh, typing npm install so this will install all of these dependencies that we have within our root folder so make sure you are in the root so once all of your dependencies have been installed you can uh, move your .env file again to the root of this folder okay so um, so sorry that I'm making you do a lot of work. Probably I should have thought of this before even starting this course. So um, that's why I had to do this. So um, once that is uh, moved, uh, you can also uh, move the main .env file, which uh, in this uh, it is my case. Okay, so this is just an example where uh, I will not be revealing all of my uh, .env files. So you can just paste in this uh, main .env file within the root of your application. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and do that so that's done so now we can create an empty folder for the uploads okay so we'll be um, uh, also making this as a static asset to uh, grab all of our um, pro the product images that we have and also to uh, store them uh, within our root directory okay so for now it is storing it in the inside the server directory so we can uh, you can we can just leave this as it is here and we can just uh, create another folder uh, within our root called uploads okay we can just leave this empty we don't need to like transfer any files or anything so once that's done let's go to this uh, package.json which is, which is in our server and we have some scripts defined right so uh, the script to uh, start the node server and uh, like uh, you know use this node one and also to data import or data destroy so we can just uh, you know copy this and paste it in our um, root folder right here and uh, let's go right below this and paste it there uh, I just need to give a comma I guess so after pasting it uh, you see that these two are conflicting so we can just change this to server okay like this and uh, now we can um, you know since this server.js is inside the server uh, folder right so we just can't run it like this so we just need to 
go server slash server dot js like this okay okay let's also do the same for the rest since all of them are inside the server directory all right so once that's done we also need to uh, run a script to run the uh, client okay so the client um, npm run dev right so uh, let's create one for the client so that we can just run it within our um, root of our application so um, within our client we can just uh, do npm run dev okay and we need to prefix this to the client directory okay so we can just do this by hyphen hyphen prefix and then the client like this okay and need to give a comma here so this will go into the client directory and run the script okay npm run dev so that's what it means okay and one final script is uh, that is called build okay so this will build both of our uh, uh, server and the client when we push this for production the third party ser service that we are using right so the render so we'll be passing that uh, command so that once we, once we uh, push push this application to deploy it will run this uh, build command okay so let's specify that build and uh, let's give npm install okay so first it will go and install all the dependencies that we have within this package.json and after that we can just give a double ampersand and uh, then we uh, say that npm install dash dash prefix okay so we need to go to the um, client directory and then uh, run npm run build okay so prefix client and then over there npm run build okay so i'll just show you uh, what does that uh, build script actually look like within our uh, client okay so what does it uh, give us so we need to uh, go to the client and uh, install all the dependencies that it has okay so uh, within our um, v tab okay so it will go and uh, install all of that and uh, then we want to uh, build all the static assets we, we have within our um, client directory and uh, also we need to give it a prefix of client like this okay so just a bit of confusion right there i hope it's clear so first it will uh, install all the dependencies within our root folder and then it will go to the client folder and install it, all the dependencies there and then finally it will um, npm run build in our uh, client over there okay so this will all be done within this npm run build once we push this for production so uh, that's done we can now move ahead to the next step so now we need to uh, modify the server.js a little bit okay so remember we created this um, uh, .env file right so for uh, the node environment okay i guess it's not over here so it's in our main .env file to control the state of uh, uh, whether we are working in production or uh, development so we can just change those values over there so uh, we can uh, check that condition okay within our server.js and handle accordingly so uh, let's go um, right above this um, not found hand middleware so let's put a condition here if process dot env dot node underscore env so that's what we specified in one, one of those videos right okay so let's check that if it is equal to production okay then we want to um, do something right so first is uh, we want to um, get the actual path name okay so which we are currently working okay so we can just get that by underscore underscore der name okay so if we are using common js module so if we are using a uh, es uh, module so we just need to handle this in a different way so we just need to specify um, a constant that is der name or we can just call this any anything we want since uh, this is related to the common js module so we can, we have to um, follow this so we can get that by path dot resolve so i guess uh, did we import path yeah so path is already imported so this will um, go and give us the current working directory so this is a function which you need to call and uh, first thing we need to do is we need to make this um, uploads folder static okay so that uh, we can fetch and uh, store all of our uh, images and all the static assets over there so we can use in the form of a middleware so app.use so that is slash uploads and um, then we are going to use a express module this has a property called static okay so this will we need to specify which are those which is the path that we need to uh, consider as static so we can use the path dot join 
that is the dir name that we just created so underscore underscore dir name and uh, the thing which we are going to join is this uploads folder so uploads you can just specify the name of the file like this okay so this will be made static and uh, after this we want to check uh, if uh, everything is okay so we need to handle the else so actually before that we need to um, um, check for another uh, condition so app dot use okay not a condition but uh, if we um, like surpass all of these routes so it will finally hit this and uh, we just need to um, send the files from the client once the uh, build the optimized production build is done okay so from our uh, client so uh, we can just uh, do that by um, app dot get this then we can pass in our request response like this okay so uh, now we can what we can just do is we can just uh, send the uh, entry point of our um, client okay so we can we have a property called send file so send file so we need to specify the um, uh, location of our entry point okay in our client so i'll just show you what it is actually doing okay so we can for now go to our client directory okay so i'll we can run the npm run build command so um, client okay so let's uh, do an npm run build okay so this will go ahead and create an optimized production build for our client so uh, we already have a script called uh, wheat build i guess so when you are running a wheat app so this is different for uh, when you are doing create react app all right so um, it's uh, somewhere okay sorry not here so package.json so it is wheat build so this will go ahead and create a optimized production build so let's wait for it and i'll just show you what does it actually do so that's done now we can uh, you see that it has created another folder over here called dist okay so when you open that we get this index.html which is the entry point of our application which just has this one div element called root okay so um, it has uh, like various like uh, all of our static assets like images and uh, some few things okay like we have this uh, main javascript file and the css file okay so if you have a look at this this will be a like you know a gibberish of code of all the different um, properties that we have within our application okay so this will go ahead and create a bundle okay so this will ultimately be sent uh, to the browser for it to execute okay and run our application so we don't we don't need to know much about this so do, just don't get scared of what just happened okay so that's done so we just need to um, specify the path of this index.html okay within our dist folder so uh, what we can do is we can just close this and and we can specify the path as path dot resolve like this and then uh, we just need to use the underscore dir name and then we need to go to the client folder then we have the dist right so this dist folder right here and then the index.html make sure you don't make any typos else it will not work all right so that's done and uh, also we need to um, make this um, folder static right so we can also create another middle middleware here right at the top so app dot use that is express dot static so that is going to be a path dot join okay so the the name then the um, that is slash client slash dist okay so we can specify slash client slash the dist folder so this will um, go ahead and treat this as a static folder and and um, like you know the backend will actually serve them okay so now let's uh, handle the else part which means that we are now in development so if we are in development we just want to um, you know uh, make sure that we are just doing this okay so we are not doing it anything much so we are just going to like send that api is running and do nothing nothing much else okay so we can just also make this uploads folder static over here so uh, i hope that's uh, done so now we can go ahead and test this out and uh, remember we are right now running our uh, server on port 5000 okay so uh, if we run that uh, port 5000 so it will go to this index.html and run our files okay so let's uh, test that out 
so now if you open your terminal and um, just run the uh, server side and not the client side so we have a, a script for that right so um, that is uh, where is that server okay so we can do npm sorry not from client so npm run server So uh, make sure you um, uh, change your .env uh, file the node node environment to uh, production. Okay, so it will be in development once you are since you are developing. So now you are pushing it to production. So make sure you change that to production and match the text that we have within our server.js. So this production here. So once that's done, let's see. Okay, so that's done. Now we can open our browser and uh, just visit localhost 5000 and just have a look what do we get so localhost 5000 so just a small mistake i just need to um, delete this as uh, okay so i just uh, copy pasted it well I, i'll had to delete this and then um, you know paste it uh, whenever we are in uh, development okay right here and also we just need to push this back by mistake i just put it inside this get um, get route okay so uh, with that uh, change is made if we have a look at our uh, front end that is at port 5000 on our browser if we refresh and there we go yeah so uh, this is running in our production mode okay so we are right now uh, just running one server that is from our backend and all of these are served as um, you know static assets from our front end okay so everything is right now working well if you also have a look at our uh, redux developer tools extension it will say you that this is using the production build of react okay so we are no more into development but into production so any changes you make will not be reflected on our ui okay so you just need to create another optimized production build and then have a look at your changes okay so uh, this is what we are right now going to uh, deploy this to our um, uh, to our render okay so this will uh, uh, we just need to push this to production over there and uh, just see our website live on the internet so before you deploy make sure you are pushing all of this code to your github okay so that uh, render will uh, you know grab all of your uh, code from the github and uh, then uh, deploy it uh, just whenever you make any changes or make any commits okay so make sure you have you are managing your um, code via github so uh, if you want to if you haven't done that yet you can just uh, run a command called git init so this will create a empty git repository within your um, whichever directory you're in okay so once that's done you can uh, go and hit git add all so this will add all of our files to our staging area so i'll just do that and uh, we need to right now commit okay so by giving a specific message dash m where we can just say um, uh, ready for production or um, we can say prepare for production or deployment anything Okay, so we can just hit enter so this will uh, go ahead and um, you know uh, commit all of your changes and uh, if you have a uh, first of all you need to go to github and create an account over there and then create a empty repository and once you create that it will give you a link okay so you can just uh, um, you can just add that uh, as an origin so once you do that you just need to um, like you know push your code over there so we i, I have already done that so i'm uh, just going to directly git push so this will push all of your code over there so make sure you do this uh, step before you actually uh, deploy your application otherwise it will use the previous version and it will not use your uh, latest commit okay so nothing will work actually so uh, let's now go ahead and uh, deploy this project so now we can uh, click on this new button right here this will uh, show you a drop down where we are right now going to deploy our web service okay not a static site since we are uh, like you know uh, doing this all from uh, localhost 5000 which is a web service which you are dealing with okay so uh, we can select this option uh, selected by default build and deploy from a git repository so click next so this will show you all of your um, uh, repositories so it it might actually tell you to authorize uh, github uh, first okay before you get before this uh, render accesses access all of your um, github file okay so once you give access so you will get a list of all your repositories so you see that just a minute ago i made a commit so i can uh, this means that this is the right repository which i'm 
interested in so i'll just click on connect so um this will uh, provide you some uh, options okay what are the all the commands that we need to run once we uh, once we push this uh, site live on the internet so um, let's give the unique name so i can just name this park tech youtube or you can name whatever you want so we'll just uh, select the nearest region where you want to um, like run your services on like so you can just select which is uh, nearest region okay uh, from the place which you are working on so for me it's singapore and the branch is going to be uh, main so if you're using master branch you can uh, specify master okay so the root directory is by default like it's optional you can just leave it so uh, we have the runtime that is node okay and the build command is uh, called npm run build okay so that that's what we specified right within our uh, application so this build okay so once we deploy this it will go and uh, run the script npm run build and uh, the start command is uh, not index.js but uh, it is just npm start okay so this will go to a uh, server and then run the entry point of our uh, whole application that is server.js so um, let's change this to npm start like that okay so right now we are not going to pay anything we are uh, mostly uh, going to use the free plan okay so now we, it's time to um, provide some environment variables that we have in our application okay so we have a list of them right so uh, we have this dot env file where we can um, go and uh, add in one by one okay so you too can do that i'll just uh, do that and get back in a moment so once your uh, once you add all of your environment variables you can finally go and hit create web service okay so um, let's wait for it So this will open a separate interface which will uh, you know show us the deployment status of uh, this website that we are doing. So we have all of the different tabs to manage. Okay, so uh, this will take a couple of minutes for it to deploy depending on the size of your application. So uh, let's uh, wait for it. All right, so now our uh, application is uh, ready like you know it's deployed okay you see that you it gives us a url where we can go and visit our website and uh, if everything goes well you just see something like this like build successful and uh, all sort of messages like this and uh, once it's done you see a message called live so uh, this means that your uh, your website is right now deployed and uh, if you want to view it you can just click on this link link and uh, have a look all right there we go we see our application live on the internet you see there it has uh, a specific domain name where you can just share this with your friends family and your uh, anyone for that matter and impress them by this project that you just created all right so um, congratulations if you have come so far and just a, a few more things to uh, go okay so uh, our application is working nice and well so let's uh, go let's go step by step and test everything if if it's working as expected so let's uh, first of all start off by signing in so let me just sign in through john our famous person uh let's wait for it maybe uh, if you're using any uh, free service like this uh, sometimes it will um, you know it will be a little slow okay so you just need to um, uh, manage that so uh, this will also come with a downside of using some free services like this okay so let's wait okay so now you see that we are officially signed in so i just tried to open this in another browser it wasn't uh, working in chrome for some reason so uh, it will actually work after a uh, few attempts okay so just don't worry about that so uh, let's also uh, click on logout and just try to sign in with google which uh, most probably it's going to fail because we haven't authorized this particular domain here which also we need to register uh, from the um, Google console, right? So you see that it's uh, it can't uh, reach this page. So let's go to our Google console and uh, try to fix this. So um, after you uh, log in through your Google console, you just need to go to your credentials tab and uh, select the your project name, okay, for which uh, you are specifying the URLs to be um, authorized okay so um, at the moment i have um, deployed my previous version of this application uh, by using this so um, if yours is like written local host uh, something somewhere like this so you just need to delete that and paste in this uh, particular um, uh, this url okay 
Uh, so without the login so let's uh, replace this with that or i can just create another one okay like this okay so this was a previous version so um, just ignore that so if you are the local host you can just replace that because that's of no more use right now or if you want uh, if you want to like work in development uh, using local host you can just uh, keep that url as well so and also let's replace this okay or you can create another one and paste that and also we just need to authorize this url that is auth slash google slash callback which is actually calling when we click on sign in with google right so we also need to authorize that and auth slash google slash callback okay so once that's done you can just click on save okay so so now we have registered our uh, url on uh, google cloud okay so on our console so let's try it once again if it uh, is working right now so when i click on sign in with google um, it is um, probably taking me to um, localhost 5000 okay so we just need to change the url of this okay so since we were in development we were uh, specifying localhost 5000 right now we are in production we can actually pro provide the actual url name right so let's go ahead and do that so uh, within our code uh, we can um, probably go to the uh, place where we are defining this uh, probably i have um, specified within this auth routes so let's search for localhost 5000 if we could find anywhere here um, probably not here maybe in the env file right so uh, i have already specified the client url maybe um, um, I'm not sure I'll just uh, yeah it's actually here this client URL okay so wherever we have client URL I have specified as uh, localhost um, 5000 okay so you can just change that to our domain name and uh, don't forget to make a commit otherwise it will not you will not see your uh, changes live on production right so uh, let's go to our example and just uh, change this client URL to our actual name like this okay so uh, once that's done we can uh, also like wherever we have localhost 5000 let's search for that mm, yeah actually in our front end we have this um, slash api right uh, so the, whenever we hit localhost 5000 so sorry whenever we um, hit slash api we need to go to localhost 5000 but now that's no longer the case so we can just replace this by our actual domain name that we have okay so we don't need the trailing slash so uh, once that's done we can uh, specify uh, the localhost 5000 i guess somewhere it is uh, hiding and also we need to change the backend url okay so we have this localhost 5000 which we can right now replace it with our um, uh, actual domain name like this do we need a slash no i, I don't think so yeah so once that uh, the changes are made we can uh, make a commit and uh, redeploy our application on render okay so i'll just see you in a minute so you can go to your terminal and uh, add all your files to the staging area that is by git add dot now let's make a commit saying that um, production fix or deployment fix Okay, so after that uh, finally let's do git push okay so this will go and uh, push our uh, changes to our github okay so um, then late, uh, later render will automatically uh, detect any changes within our code and uh, try to rebuild it okay so um, so it has pushed successfully now if we go back to our um, render you see that uh, we, we can go to our dashboard back like this so when you click on this events tab you see that uh, it has automatically uh, uh, detected our commit so it will go ahead and try to redeploy okay so when i click on sign in with google it should take me to the uh, right uh, domain name okay so for the for some reason it's saying that this um, access is blocked so that uh, i i mean uh, the app request is invalid so uh, maybe there's a mismatch in the url so uh, it gives us a set of instructions like what we need to add uh, so we have the redirect uri and uh, i guess uh, we just need to um, uh, 
copy this and just uh, paste it wherever we have um, in our redirect URI. Okay, so um, I'll, let me just copy this and go back to our um, console and click on our project name and uh, redirect URI. So it's right here and we can just add an, another one and just paste it. I guess probably it's the same one, right? Um, actually, this is HTTPS, but it should be HTTP because uh, this is actually not in the secure mode and uh, we can just specify even HTTP for that matter and click on save. So once that's done, we can just try to um, go back and just give it a refresh and try again this time probably it should uh, authorize us yes there we go so it will give you a list of all of your signed in accounts so you can just click on any one of them and uh, sign in okay so if i click the click on this uh, i get another error for some reason so if you are the developer app i guess we also need to add in the scope in your uh, google console and uh, we can um, try to test our app after that okay so when you go on your OAuth consent screen so uh, and click on edit your uh, project so it will open an interface like this where um, you can just leave uh, the details as is and uh, save and continue so you'll get another uh, page for uh, the scopes okay so we can add or remove scopes so when you click on that uh, this will draw open a drawer and we just need to um, add in a scope okay so you can just go in the right at the bottom and uh, copy this particular scope that we have so we can just paste that like this and add to the table and also i guess uh, we have another url right here so let's also copy that and paste and click on update okay so so that will add to our scopes and click save and continue and uh, nothing else i guess right so back to dashboard okay so that's done now let's um, try to um, sign in once again through google auth so once again sign in with google choose an account and there we go we are right now officially signed in and uh, yeah so uh, that's done for the login process we can let's try to order a product and uh, just test everything out so uh, let's enter all these details click on place order so the, the order is placed so let's click on pay with stripe uh, probably there's an error right so uh, maybe i need to also uh, add in the authorization for the stripe url otherwise it will uh, actually not work the reason why we might we might uh, get such an error that is a um, bad gateway that uh, 502 error is that um, maybe uh, stripe internally uh, is not allowing us to uh, make a request from this particular website and uh, maybe some more configuration needs to be done uh, if you know any solution like why do we get this error and uh, like um, like well, why are we actually facing this once we deploy please uh, let me know in the comments i'll just try to fix that and uh, maybe because of, of this uh, so if you um, uh, deploy this on a real uh, website uh, like um, purchasing the hosting and domain and then deploying it there maybe maybe we might not face uh, such a such issues right so um, maybe that was the reason I also checked the Stripe documentation about this but uh, it, uh, it didn't give me any valuable information to fix such kind of errors and I also googled it. So, um, so please let me know if you um, know the solution for this. So I'll be happy to take it. So uh, let's uh, meanwhile continue with the rest of our application. So uh, we can uh, order, we have seen the order of products and the payment and uh, let's uh, check out our profile. So um, let's see, I want to uh, rename this to something else like this and uh, update it so it says that profile update if i refresh you see that it is uh, it has updated the profile you can just test it out the same for the password and confirm password and uh, so if i want to write a review for a product so let's test that out uh, let's click on the smartphone um, uh, let's write a review like nice product and submit it 
so there you go we have our review added over here uh, nice and good so uh, that's working and now let's um, let's test the admin routes that we have to manage the users uh, products and orders so uh, let me uh, first log in with an admin account so let's log out and let's log in with john that is at john at email.com and the password all right so um login successful and now let's go to the admin tab oh, this thing is so annoying so let's click on users so we can see all the users so if i want i can just delete one i guess um, this is a duplicate one with a different email so i can click on delete uh, there we go so for some reason there's no post message um, that's also a, a bug i guess which we need to fix and uh, yeah that action is working now we can check for the products then um, we can just edit a product like let's say we want to um, uh, first let's create a product so a product is create we can edit okay a product so probably um, probably this should be auto filter it so uh, yeah so there we go so let's click on update as it is so the product is now updated and uh, we can also delete the product uh, yeah so there we go our everything is working and also le let's check the same for the orders okay so if i want i can just view the details of this order and i can mark this as delivered right so this is right now delivered and yeah everything is working fine i guess okay so um, few more things whether you can just test it out um, i just want to bore you with everything that we have already done uh, in our introduction introduction video and also throughout the course that we have been doing right so um, that's done uh, probably yeah so we are at the end of our um monstack e-commerce course so thank you so much for coming so far okay so i i really appreciate you following along and if you have come at this point so uh, just pat yourself at the back because you have learned a lot of features uh, from this product yeah, i know this is not the uh, best uh, I, I, this is not the best ui you know this is not a not the best ui if you try to sell this to your client you know he would just uh, slap you back right so this is a, a project just about to learn all the technologies and features if you want to build a merge tech uh, project uh, in the future right so um i know there are there are quite a bit of bugs okay so uh, which i, I also like uh, lately got to know and you, you see that just now i just uh, wrote a review it's giving a long decimal value okay so that that also i need to fix so probably i'll just uh, create another the video to fix all the bugs and what are the best practices you need to follow while um, uh, writing a month stack project okay while coding it and uh, yeah so uh, thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video